Well, is, is this an issue of a constrained fiscal space or lack of goodwill from the leadership to deal with this strike? No, not the first thing that we must accept is that there is a binding CBA That's that was entered into voluntarily between the union and the government. And you cannot say that the government, I mean, the government was coerced, was under duress when it was signing. In terms of equality of arms in that negotiating table, the government was far much stronger than the union. Mm -hmm. So they committed to this CBA. So what we have is that the government went on strike at first by failing to honor the CBA. The doctors and any medical worker who has a CBA with the government is entitled to benefit fully from that CBA. If the second point that the government desires to pay less, to walk away from that CBA, allegedly because they don't have enough money, let's start from saying this. Start by reducing your own salary, what you're earning as president, as CS, as members of parliament, as county assembly members, reduce everybody's salary. Then say, you see everybody in Kenya is taking a salary cut. Then you call the doctors now, back to the negotiating table and tell them, this is the state of our economy. We are not able to afford our commitment. Can we now renegotiate this CBA to reduce the terms of engagement? But if you've not had that kind of a conversation, why should the doctors even waste a single minute negotiating with the government on uh, payment or going back to work. When the previous negotiation, the commitment that was made, that was signed, that is binding, is not being honored. What is the value of your word today? If the word that you gave seven years ago, you are refusing to honor. Yeah. You are a dishonorable man. You should not be believed. You are actually a quack. And the doctors are actually right. To re in fact, they should refuse, in my <coughs> view, to participate in any negotiation yeah. before the CBA that is existing is complied with. And number two tied to that is that once the CBA is entered into, it is registered in court yeah. so to be binding. binding. It's a legally binding document. Yeah. So the first person who is in contempt of court is the one refusing and failing to honor the CBA. Mm. Not the one who is exercising his Article 37 right yeah. to agitate for the implementation of the legally binding court order. So William Ruto, Nahumisha, Salary Relation Commission, they are all in contempt of court. And we should be dealing with them purging their act of contempt first mm -hmm. before any negotiations can be done. The third, third point I want to make is this. When you say you don't have money, but you have money that you are maintaining a very luxurious lifestyle at the expense of doctors. You have money to increase their locations to the office of first lady, the office of second lady, they have, you've increased supplementary budget. You don't even have an office called Secretary. They don't even exist, but you allocated them almost between the two offices, more than 1.2 billion Kenya shillings for two individuals to do what? These are people who had lives before. They had existing earnings so they could live. Why are you spending 1.2 billion shillings on two offices when you cannot spend 4 billion to honor your legal obligation? When you look at the characters in government today, People who were barely last year, two years ago, almost bankrupt. They are driving around in big cars, Balenciaga, they are wearing Gucci belts, uh, somebody to watches that are worth 25 million Kenya shillings. So, and we know their salaries. And, and we know their salaries, which are publicly available. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's be honest here. Yeah. These people are not being genuine with the doctors. Then number, number three, doctors are actually leading Kenyans in a war, a war against a disease. Mm. I have never had the salary of a soldier delayed because the soldiers also are leading us in a war to protect our borders, yeah. to protect our country. Why do we despise our medical workers mm. and think that only the physical attack, that in any event, Kenya has not been at any war for the last more than 20 years. We've not been at any war. But, I mean external war, but we are having a continuous internal war of disease every single day. Yeah. And the first responders are our medical workers. Why can't we invest, as Dr. Manduku says, yeah. meet our commitment under the Abuja Declaration to commit 15% of our national revenue to this medical facility, to this medical health sector? Yeah. Then the final point I want to make is this. When we even talk about doctors or medical officers, workers, generally, do you know there's nobody in this country who works like those people? Mm. And I say this with tremendous respect to what they have done to us. You only get to appreciate 
what a doctor will do to you when you have an emergency patient. It's in the middle of the night. There is a medical emergency, there's an accident, you appear before a facility. And you, have, you can do nothing, even if you have all the money in the world. You can do nothing to save their lives. The only person who will come in to assist is that night nurse, is that intern, that registrar, that you will find at the facility, who will try to find something that they need to do yeah. to help save the life of your patient. So we must understand that they don't work like us. Me as a lawyer can say, I'm going to court, I'll go with the court to Kuru today at 8 o'clock. I'm out by 5, I've done my work, I'll go home. Even if a client was arrested at midnight, I'll tell him, there's nothing I can do to you. We meet tomorrow at 8 o'clock mm -hmm. in court. But a doctor does not have that luxury to say, he's been called at midnight, there's an emergency, that I cannot come because I'll wait until 8 o'clock. Yeah. These people work 24 hours. Okay. If they're not on duty, they're on call. If an emergency occurs, even if you're on your annual leave, yeah. everybody takes off to appear before the facility to attend to that emergency. So we must treat these sector workers, in my view. Yeah. This should be our number one priority workers. Okay. And if we don't honor our commitment to them, yeah. we have no business renegotiating anything okay. in this sector. Uh,